Crunchyroll has opted to permanently alter the Mob Psycho 100 dub. But not just that, but also continue a long-standing anti-voice actor precedent that only serves to save them money. The voice for Mob, Kyle McCarley, was recently let go after attempting to fight for a union contract to ensure better benefits and pay for not just himself, but his fellow VAs. Before we dive further into the situation, though, we should examine Crunchyroll's history as a company. Crunchyroll started in 2006 as what amounts to a modern-day anime pirate site, hosting illegally uploaded content and fan subs, at times even taking fan subs to lock behind a paywall, as for all intents and purposes, Crunchyroll was a for-profit site. As they grew their collection more and more, so too did their hold on the anime community. They grabbed more of the market share, started securing capital investments as early as 2008, started securing licensing rights to legally streamed television series, until as recently as 2020 getting acquired by Sony for $1.1 billion dollars. This site, that once served as a YouTube knockoff, grew into an anime streaming titan worth billions of dollars that holds what some might consider a monopoly over streaming in western spaces. The only competition left would be Funimation- oh god, oh fuck. Not only could one argue that Crunchyroll started itself off with shady dealings with fan subs, but now as a colossal titan of the anime industry, it now partakes in the brutality that the industry is known for. Massive popular studios like MAPPA already face staff leaving after massive amounts of overwork as the studio takes on more and more massive projects, such as Jujutsu Kaisen, Chainsaw Man, Attack on Titan, Hell's Paradise, Vinland Saga, and so many more. Of course, overwork isn't exclusive to just animators or anime staff, and working conditions around the world are something people fight to improve. Of course, the fight for better working conditions extends all the way to the people who bring anime content to the West as well. A couple of years ago, Crunchyroll came under extraordinarily short-lived fire due to the shafting of its translators and localizers. For the uneducated, translating anime isn't as easy as taking the Japanese and casting a magical incantation to turn it into English. Localization is a job that requires a very good understanding of both languages and the ability to, well, localize. English and Japanese are two very different languages, and what localizers do is attempt to find something that sounds more natural than a direct one-to-one -one translation while still capturing the spirit of the original. It is by no means an easy job at all. A prime example of localization is how honorifics are handled. You could directly translate every honorific, or alternatively, you could localize them to maintain their intent. An example from the anime ReZero is how Subaru in the original Japanese calls Emilia with the Tan honorific, a very cutesy way of referring to someone with the Chan honorific, because the Tan sound is much easier for children than the Chan sound. Obviously, this is something that is impossible to directly translate to English, so the dub instead changed it to have him call her the affectionate nickname, Mili. As a localizer for subtitles, not only are you constantly under fire by idiotic weebs who don't understand the slightest thing about English, let alone Japanese, but you're also having to do research on fields you are by no means an expert in, such as if an episode utilized medical terminology, or possibly you're working long hours because the episode you're translating is massively dialogue heavy. Now if you go to Crunchyroll, that's it, that's all you make. $80. That's all you get for your efforts. There is an amazing video by the Canapa Effect on this, which I will link down in the description below, so please check that out for a massive extrapolation on this topic. So not only does Crunchyroll have a history of paywalling fan subs, not only do they have a history of severely underpaying its localization or translation staff, but now we get to the most recent incident about dub voice actors. When you're an actor, there's this thing called the union. Not like a union, but the union. It's called SAG-AFTRA, and it represents over 160,000 performers, serving the purpose of negotiating contracts with studios to guarantee better working conditions, especially during a pandemic, as well as benefits and consistent pay. This means when you're working on stuff like TV or movies, you're more often than not going to be working under a union contract. However, Crunchyroll is notorious for having shows that are not under a SAG contract. According to the Coalition of Dubbing Actors, Funimation, which has now been absorbed by Crunchyroll, would pay only $35 to $75 an hour. SAG contracts guarantee much higher pay, as well as a two-hour minimum, meaning even if you aren't in the booth for two hours, you would still get at least two hours pay. Sarah Sakura, a voice actor who has been in many popular works, says that even voice actors who are working nearly full-time in anime might only be making twenty dollars to $30,000 a year. We got this covered.com reported that the Coalition of Dubbing Actors also stated that despite two of the most prolific dubbing companies being purchased by a giant media conglomerate and merging into one mega platform, people in the dub industry are still being paid like it's the early 2000s. And that's true. Anime is the biggest it's ever been, thanks to people like dub VAs, localizers, and countless talented people that work for this now giant media conglomerate, who help bring this content over to the West, yet conditions remain unchanged. Films like My Hero Academia World's Hero Mission bring in 29 million USD, Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, an anime movie dubbed by Crunchyroll, and a massive success in both Japan and abroad, finished second on its opening week, only behind The Batman, another massive movie in the West. After making 17.7 .7 million US dollars from the opening weekend, voice actors proceeded to get paid $150. The actors who brought the story to life were paid less than 0.001% that the film made over a single weekend. No residuals, no session minimums, no benefits, 
nothing. $150 for your work on a wildly successful film. But $75 an hour must be great, right? Well, when you're working freelance and sometimes working once a week or even less, $75 an hour looks less and less appealing. So you get paid $75 an hour while working once every couple of weeks. Possibly hurt yourself if you're working on something like Dragon Ball Z, which has a lot of screaming and yelling. Earn no residuals and get no benefits. So why do they do it? Because it is work they love. Anime is work that they are passionate about, and bringing these stories to life and having them be more accessible to Western audiences, playing these influential characters is something these people can only dream of. People continue to work despite these stagnating conditions because they absolutely love what they do. You have people like Zeno Robinson, who clearly absolutely love the character he plays, or Aneris Quinones and so many other VAs who have gone on the record about these issues, but still continue to play characters that might not have that much screen time, basically getting shafted by pay. This was a lot of preamble, so let's get the situation everyone is here for. As you all probably know, Mob Psycho 100 Season 3 is currently in development. For Season 3's dub, the cast was interested in producing the show under a SAG contract, and when brought up to Crunchyroll, they basically spat in the face of the cast. They saw an opportunity to try and pressure Crunchyroll to finally accept a union contract for the first time, and Kyle McCarley, the voice of Mob, tried to utilize his leading role and went to Crunchyroll and said that he will work on this final season of Mob Psycho with no contract, as long as they at least have a meeting with SAG after representatives to possibly work out a possible, not guaranteed, future union contract for future Crunchyroll dubs. So naturally, they sat down with the representatives, uh, I'm just kidding, Crunchyroll refused to even talk to the representatives, and then immediately started shopping to recast Mob. Crunchyroll is so allergic to guaranteeing the bare minimum for their voice actors, to continue to have them accept the table scraps of their bountiful feast, known as their monopoly over anime streaming, that only continues to grow, that they won't even consider the option of sitting down with union members. What these performers ask for isn't collective ownership of Crunchyroll, or some faraway dream, what they ask for is something to live on. A sag after health plan in a nation with no guaranteed healthcare, or something like Netflix has, which is the most favorable dubbing actor contract to date, with a minimum of 3 hours pay for work up from the usual 2, and strenuous sessions capped at 2 hours with a 25% premium on pay, a contract that Netflix was not forced into at all, but one that Ben Diskin says Netflix themselves sought out. The anime industry is terrible for almost everyone involved, except the people sitting at the top, as they exploit people's passion in bringing you stories that mean the world to them, whether it be animators, translators, voice actors, or even the mangaka who produce the source material for these narratives. Michael Schwab further calls into question the workloads of pay for people like time coders, engineers, script writers, directors, and more, as some directors were allegedly forced to do script prep before sessions for no pay, and may have to direct anywhere from 8 to 12 hours of sessions per day, so their total workday may be 14 hours. I've seen a few actors now say that it's not about the money, as if it's an attempt to be optically better to the average consumer, but like, why isn't it about the money. It should be about the money as well. It should be about earning a livable wage. What Kyle and probably many other voice actors I don't even know about have done is incredibly brave. To stand up not just for themselves, but for their fellow worker in an attempt to increase the standard is extraordinarily admirable. These people are living by their ideals and literally losing work over them in an attempt to leave behind a better industry for newcomers and people currently taking jobs alike. If you're wondering what you can possibly do to try and push Crunchyroll in the right direction, it's stuff like this very video. This video only exists because I am firmly pro-union and believe in workers' rights, and I'm attempting to use the small platform I have to be another loud voice in opposition of the abuses that Crunchyroll regularly engages in. Kyle was let go without a second thought due to him wanting a potential talk with union reps, but Chris Niozzi, the English voice of Reagan, who had multiple accusations of sexual misconduct that he himself had fully admitted to without a shadow of a doubt, and his future at least so far with the Mob Psycho dub has stayed pretty secure. It seems that Chris Niozzi has sincerely owned up to his mistakes and has multiple people in the industry that I respect vouching for him and his improvement, but it definitely paints a picture of what Crunchyroll is willing to accept when they can accept sexual misconduct but draw the line at workers' rights. Unions are an unambiguously great thing for workers, giving employees the power of collective bargaining, allowing them to negotiate baseline minimums for the entire company all at once. As Kyle McCarley states, SAG-AFTRA helps protect voice actors by negotiating terms that protect actors from vocally stressful jobs, putting a hard cap on how long sessions can go if they involve super strenuous work. Unions help ensure better wages, benefits, and working conditions for your employees, as well as pressure non-union companies to provide a better baseline for its workers. Union contracts could improve the quality of some of your favorite shows, as actors would then get guaranteed health benefits, protections from strenuous work, and better pay to help actually uplift the industry, contrary to what Crunchyroll claims you're no longer doing when you unsub, as companies love to shift the blame and the burden onto the consumers rather than themselves. You can tweet at them, you can submit customer support tickets on Crunchyroll, you can make your own content and be proudly and boldly against this decision. I don't care if you think dubs suck, 
I don't even really watch dubs. This goes beyond stupid weeaboo arguments on Twitter. This involves people's livelihoods, and we should do what we can to help them from the outside. If you truly want to support the anime industry, this is a discussion you should be involved in. Thank you for watching. I know this is outside of my normal purview of content, but I just wanted to have a little discussion because this is something I'm passionate about. Not necessarily with the anime industry, but with just workers' rights and stuff like that. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and maybe I'll make more discussion videos about the state of the anime industry. You can check the description down below to follow me on Twitter, where I post about My Hero Academia, ReZero, and the anime industry sometimes. Uh, you can also join my Discord down below, where we talk about all kinds of anime, My Hero Academia, ReZero, Jujutsu Kaisen, stuff like that. And you can also now go down below and become a member of the channel, get you a little badge, get you some emotes when I live stream, and also lets you see some behind-the-scenes content. That's about it, though. Thank you for watching.